Hey guys, how's it going? I just want to share some thoughts on Romans chapter 8, verse 22 and 23, and this has to do with kind of futurism and how people believe that there will be a millennial kingdom on the earth, that Christ will reign, and that we will, the saints will have resurrected physical bodies, you know, before, during this time. And um, so let's look at Romans 8, 22 and 23, because I think these are verses that are kind of part of that. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. And so, uh, I want to point out uh, a thing in each verse. In verse 22, it talks about whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together. Okay, so it talks about creation groaning, and in verse 23 it talks about the redemption of our body. And so on uh, verse 22 when it talks about creation groaning, I, I'm pretty sure that I've heard before people talk about how, uh, you know, all of creation's groaning, and this includes the trees and the grass and rocks and everything that God created. And, um, and they're all waiting for this millennial kingdom when God's going to renew uh, everything. Um, so, I just want to point out that that's not a correct interpretation of this verse. Uh, the whole creation represents mankind. And I've read various commentaries that have said this, and that seems to be the context just looking at it. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, they were talking about people, but ourselves also. So not only, uh, you know, the Gentiles are not only, you know, lost people, but everybody in general, all mankind. So the whole creation represents all mankind. And uh, I bet, uh, you know, that I could probably find some, some commentaries, some videos where people go over this, uh, the whole creation groaning, and they'll say that trees and rocks and such uh, are groaning. Uh, maybe Robert Breaker did that, maybe not, but uh, it'd be interesting to see. Also, you know, and this kind of comes up because of one of Robert Breaker's videos, uh, because he had a questions and answers one where he talked about, you know, how's God going to resurrect our bodies? Well, it was the video, I think it was, he was going over, uh, should a Christian be cremated or should they be buried? And, and he says, you know, he talks about the physical resurrection, what he believes, you know, believers will, will have our bodies resurrected. And and uh, so he says, for that reason, you know, he doesn't like cremation. He wants his body to be intact. But then people say, well, even bodies that were buried, you know, centuries and centuries, thousands of years ago, they are, you know, decayed and, and rotted and they're gone, basically just... Uh, disintegrated, and uh, he said, well, God knows where every particle and where every atom of the body is, and he can just bring it back together. And, uh, you know, I kind of had that conversation with one of my pastors before, a preacher at Assembly of God Church, and and uh, I thought, okay, that makes sense. Uh, you know, obviously God can do that, because God can do anything, but at the same time, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, and it's not what the Bible teaches, because that would not be a resurrection of a body, that would be basically rebuilding an entire new body. <laughs> okay, the Bible teaches that when we die, we're going to have a spiritual body, and that's that's it. There's no other future body waiting after that. Uh, it's pretty clear. And so, I think that a lot of people will use this verse, Romans chapter eight, verse twenty-three, where it talks about the redemption of our body, and they automatically they take it literally, and they insert their own interpretation to it. And they think that it means that our physical body is going to be redeemed and we're going to have a new physical body. And so I'm going to read this Matthew Poole's commentary, which I think is kind of helpful on this, where it talks about the redemption of our body. And he says, basically, it means our perfect deliverance from sin and misery. He says this phrase is used in other places, Luke 21, 28, and Ephesians 4, 30. And uh, it, it kind of talks just about our redemption in general. That's kind of what this means. Uh, I think that the body represents the whole man, and uh, you know we're just, we're waiting uh, to be with the Lord, 
to have no more sorrow, to have no more pain, no more misery. That's the idea, is that, uh, you know, we're not going to have all the troubles of this life anymore. That's what we're waiting to be redeemed for, okay? Uh, and, and, and he says, but why our body and not our soul? And so... That's, you know, if you're going to think, think about it literally, too, I mean, it doesn't say that our, our soul is going to be redeemed, and, and, you know, you could get into some troubles there, uh, but it's, that's pretty absurd. Um, and he says, uh, because uh, their souls would be an actual possession of the inheritance before that day, or, and, and this is more help, the miseries and troubles of this life are conveyed to the whole man by the body, so the redemption of the body is, in effect, the redemption of the whole man. So I think that, you know, the body here, the, the redemption of our body is basically, you know, just us being redeemed. It doesn't mean that we're going to have a new physical body, uh, you know, at the time of the millennial kingdom. And even if that's the case, you know, in a, if you just think this out, there's all these absurdities because they'll say, well, we're going to get a, a new physical body at the time of the millennial kingdom. And um, so what about all the people who have died now? Well, they don't have that body. And so they're still waiting for that. So it's like they're not satisfied now, okay, because there's something even better to come. Or, you know, um, and then some people at the Millennial Kingdom, you know, will get their physical body. And then the saints from before would finally get their physical body or whatever. It doesn't make any sense at all. And... Uh, so basically, I think it just means, you know, we're waiting for our redemption to be with the Lord, to be free from sin and sorrow and pain and all the things that are in this life. We're going to have a spiritual body when we die. And uh, basically, I can just do a quick word search in Paul's letters, look up spiritual and, you know, he talks about in 1 Corinthians 15, 44, it says, It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, our physical body that we have now, and then there is a spiritual body. Okay. So, those that are earthy are they that are earthy. Those that are heavenly are they which are heavenly. So, uh, so I think it's just a silly doctrine, and you know, it's obviously not the gospel, but I think that some futurists try to make it that. But I just want to understand these verses better as they're meant to be understood, and I think that, you know, when it says creation groaning, it's talking about mankind specifically. Okay, not trees and everything else and uh <clears throat> when it talks about the redemption of our body it's talking about you know our, our redemption in general our freedom from sin our freedom from you know these bodies that hold us back these bodies that you know uh we feel pain in and stuff so you know we'll be freed from these bodies we'll have new spiritual bodies instantly so that's something to think about, and I would like to look at a lot of these other verses. I know there's a lot of verses in the Old Testament that people go to for this Millennial Kingdom, and a lot of them, even futurists who believe in the Millennial Kingdom, if you look at their commentaries, a lot of the verses that other people will try to use in the Old Testament, they'll say, you know, th these don't have anything to do with the Millennial Kingdom. They're, they're prophecies that were already fulfilled in the past or whatever. And so, uh, but I'd like to look at some of the big ones, or all of them, eventually, and try to understand them better. But uh, that's that for now. God bless.